Welcome to Spark Goat. Today, we bring you the list of top 10 greatest athletes of all time. This isn't a list of all-time best stars, though all of the celebrities on the list may have been fantastic players. This is a list of the biggest athletes who wonder what makes one a great athlete. Athletic grandeur is defined for this list as having a variety of attributes that contribute to athletic prowess. This includes pace, stamina, and synchronization of power and hand-eye. So, let the countdown commence. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the bell to be notified of new content. Number 10 on our list is Wayne Gretzky, only the greatest player of all time in hockey. Wayne Douglas Gretzky is a retired Canadian professional ice hockey player and recent head coach. He played 20 seasons with four clubs in the National Hockey League, NHL, from 1979 to 1999. Nicknamed the Big One, several sports writers, celebrities, and the NHL itself have declared him the best hockey player ever. Gretzky is the NHL's top scorer with more goals and assists than any other player in the past. He has earned more assists than any other player has scored total goals and is the only NHL player who has scored more than 200 points in a single season, an achievement he has completed four times. Moreover, in 16 career seasons, Gretzky scored more than 100 goals, 14 of which were consecutive. He owned 61 NHL records at the time of his 1999 retirement, 40 regular season records, 15 postseason records, and 6 All-Star records. Ninth position belongs to Babe Didrikson Zaharias, the greatest female athlete of all time, standing basketball player, field competitor, and champion golfer from the Olympic gold medalist. Didrikson had many talents, though best known for her sporting skills. She also went into weaving training. She was an outstanding seamstress, producing all of her clothes like her golf suits. At the 1931 Texas State Fair in Dallas, she claimed to have captured the sewing championship. She captured the South Texas State Fair in Beaumont, embellishing the story several years later in 1953. She attended high school in Beaumont. She was never good academically, compelled to retake the eighth grade and a year older than her classmates. Since transferring to Dallas to play basketball, she finally dropped out without graduating. She was a singer and player of the harmonica and recorded many songs on the label Mercury Records. Her bestseller was I Had a Little Teardrop on the flip side with Detour. Occupying number eight is Babe Ruth. Seven World Series championships, 714 home runs, 2,204 RBIs, a 690 slugging percentage, 12 home run championships, a lifetime batting average often overlooked at 342. And he was a decent pitcher with two 21 seasons. He had stopped pitching early in his career because he was too good of a hitter. Though he didn't look like an athlete, who else was one of the best batters and pitchers of his day in history? Ruth set a single season home run record of 29 while with the Red Sox in 1919. That turned out to be just the start of a string of Ruth's record-breaking achievements. He'd hit 54 home runs in 1920, his first year in New York. He shattered his own record in his second season by hitting 59 home runs, and Ruth had made his name as the all-time home run leader for baseball in fewer than 10 seasons. Seventh on the long is Deion Sanders. Sanders was a consistent All-Pro and one of the best pass defenders ever to play the position during his 14-year NFL career. Sanders, too, mostly coordinated with the aggression of his squad. Sanders missed the baseball season during the 1996 season, focused on football, and attended his career's first NFL training camp in order to get more acquainted with the complexities of the wide receiver position. He is just the second two-way starter in the NFL after Chuck Budnarik, after Roy Green of the Cardinals. Sanders was the only guy playing in both a Super Bowl and a World Series, hitting a Major League Baseball home run and scoring a National Football League touchdown in the same week, and getting both a catch and a Super Bowl interception. He's one of two players with six possible ways to score an NFL touchdown. Interception return, kickoff return, punt return, catching, running, and fumble recovery. Popular with everyone, but sitting on the sixth position is Pele the best football player of all time, Pele, whose nickname is seemingly meaningless, was ignored by big club teams in the city of Sao Paulo after playing with a minor league club at Baru, state of Sao Paulo. However, he joined the Santos Football Club in 1956, which won nine league championships in Sao Paulo, with Pele in the inside left forward. 
and both the Libertadores Cup and the Intercontinental Club Cup in 1962 and 63. He became a Brazilian national symbol, also called Perolo Negra, Black Pearl. He mixed kicking strength and accuracy with excellent abilities to predict movements from other players. After the World Cup in 1958, the Brazilian government proclaimed Pele a national treasure in order to fend off huge offers from European clubs to ensure he remained in Brazil. He scored his 1,000th goal in his 909th first-class match on November 20, 1969. Fifth position belongs to Michael Jordan. In 1984, the Chicago Bulls selected Jordan. He led the league in scoring in his first season, 1984-85, as a player and was voted Rookie of the Year. After missing much of the following season with a fractured foot, he returned to lead the NBA in scoring for seven straight seasons, averaging about 33 points per game. He was just the second player to score 3,000 points in a single season, 1986-87, after Wilt Chamberlain. Jordan was named five times Most Valuable Player MVP of the NBA in 1988, 91, 92, 1996, and 1998 and in 1988 he was also named Defensive Player of the Year. Jordan retired briefly in October 1993 after leading the Bulls to their third straight title and he sought a professional baseball career. In March 1995 he returned to basketball. During the 1995-96 season, Jordan led the Bulls to a regular season record of 72-10, the highest in NBA history, broken by the Golden State Warriors in 2015 and 16. The Jordan-led Bulls again won three championships in a row from 1996 to 1998, and each time Jordan was named NBA Finals MVP. Jordan left again after the 1997-98 season. Muhammad Ali is a household name, and he sets on number four. Clay has been better known for his charisma and attitude than for his fighting skills in his early fights as a professional. By reading childlike poems and spouting self-descriptive phrases such as float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, he sought to raise public interest in his games. He told the world that he was the best, but the harsh reality of boxing seemed to suggest otherwise. Clay angered the sports devotees as much as he impressed them. He kept his hands unconventionally low, backed away from punches instead of bobbing and spinning out of risk, and seemed to miss the real knockout strength. He was best in competitors who were a combination of veterans who had long gone past their peak and players who had never been anything than mediocre. Pura screamed as Clay anticipated the round in which he intended to knock out a rival, and when he did, they grimaced and bragged about the new victory. Third place goes to Jim Thorpe. A man's 6'1", 180-pound wall. He was a two-time All-American football player at Carlisle and was named the country's best football player, his favorite sport although at the time there was no award. He led Carlisle to an 11-1 record in 1911, then carried them to the 1912 National Collegiate Championship, scoring 25 touchdowns and 198 points. He has played four positions, running back, defensive back, place kicker, and punter. Also in 1912, he effortlessly won the gold medals in the pentathlon and decathlon at the Summer Olympics in Stockholm, Sweden, winning an incredible eight of the 15 individual events that were part of both competitions. Thorpe's 8,413-point Olympic record in the decathlon has stood for almost two decades. He even starred in the track and field, was a successful baseball and lacrosse player, and also won a prize for dancing in the ballroom all while at Carlisle. At different points in his life, he also dabbled in competitions of boxing and basketball. He went on to become a professional football star, although there was no official league until 1920, retiring in 1928 at the age of 41. Second on our list is Bo Jackson, a phenomenal college football player at Auburn University, Heisman Trophy recipient, ran for 4,303 yards and 6.6 .6 yards per carry average, a very good professional baseball player, all-star, batted 250, 141 home runs, 415 RBIs, 474 slugging percentage, and a big arm, who had a decent professional football career that was just too short. He ran for 2,782 yards, averaging 5.4 yards a carry. It must have been mind-boggling to see what he might have done in all sports without the injuries. Guess what? Jim Brown is our number one. 
He won 13 letters in high school playing five sports, football, basketball, baseball, lacrosse, and track. He has won All-American honors in both football and lacrosse at Syracuse University. He has been the top player in the world in both sports by some reports. In lacrosse, when leading Syracuse into the National College Lacrosse Championship, he led the country in scoring. Brown is a member of both the Halls of Fame and the Lacrosse Hall of Fame college and professional football team. Imagine, this is a guy who could have been the best in two totally different sports who ever existed. Hope you enjoyed the video. Which one is your favorite? Comment down below and let us know for regular updates.